Hello church, thank you for joining me today. Welcome to a new series, it's Brain Battles. In this series, we'll be talking about how to change our thinking to be transformed into the kind of person God wants us to be. I believe one of the most important things I could instruct you in to teach you in is, is that your thoughts are powerful and they will actually determine your future. Have you heard the saying, it's all in your mind? It's all in your mind. Well, that's exactly where our success and victories begin, in our thinking. You could think yourself into a mess. It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Or you could think yourself into a place of victory. The mind is one of the hardest areas to get under control and keep under control. Now, now, part of why it's hard is because Satan will attack you with lies and deceptions. You need to guard yourself against that. Identify who the enemy is in the brain battles. It's not your spouse. It's not your neighbor or your, your employer or your or co-workers. Your enemy is not your family or your friends or the government or even the church. It's Satan. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11 says, Keep awake, watch at all times. The devil is working against you. He is walking around like a hungry lion with his mouth wide open. He is looking for someone to eat. That's quite a vivid picture of who our enemy is. A lion prowling around seeking someone to devour, to destroy. Ephesians chapter 6 10 through 14 also defines who our enemy is, but then also gives us stuff to stand up against his tax. This is the last thing I want to say. Be strong with the Lord's strength. Put on the things God gives you to fight with. Then you will not fall into the traps of the devil. Our fight is not with people. It is against the leaders and the powers and the spirits of darkness in this world. It is against the demon world that works in the heavens. Because of this, put on all the things God gives you to fight with. Then you will be able to stand in that sinful day. When it is all over, you will still be standing. So stand up and do not be moved. Wear a belt of truth around your body. Wear a piece of iron over your chest, which is being right with God. Wear shoes on your feet, which are the good news of peace. Most important of all, you need a covering of faith in front of you. This is to put out the fiery arrows of the devil. The covering for your head is that you have been saved from the punishment of sin. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. What we think will determine who you become. Thoughts are powerful. They change our perspectives. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Well, it means to change my lifestyle. I don't go to the places or do the things I used to do. Value the things I used to value. My lifestyle is not conformed to what is acceptable by the world. I live according to God's values and His love. The word that's translated be transformed is from the Greek word that means keep being transformed from the inside out. We get our word metamorphosis from this word and it describes how a caterpillar is completely changed into a butterfly. Now I must believe and receive what God thinks and says about me. To do this, I must be in his word. I must receive the gift that Jesus gave for me on the cross. Last Monday I made some chicken wings and the key to making juicy flavorful meats is in the soaking, the marinade. The chicken takes on the flavor it's marinated in. Now, in the same way, I need to marinate my mind in God's thoughts and nature. The key to being transformed is the renewing of my mind. 
The mind takes on whatever I choose to soak it in. What I think about, I become. What I dwell on, I reflect. I need to soak my mind daily in the truth of God's word. I need to invite the Holy Spirit to influence me with his love and truth. I need to be in constant communication with Jesus, confessing my fears and failures daily. I need to believe and receive his grace every hour to cover the character flaws of my life. It's really replacement therapy, not replacement theology, replacement therapy. The more I'm immersed in God's nature, the more I am transformed in my mind. Thoughts are powerful. They impact our decisions. Proverbs 4.23 Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Your thoughts have tremendous ability to shape your life for good or for bad. So here's an example. Maybe you accepted the thought someone told you when you were growing up that that you were worthless. You don't matter. You're not going to amount to anything. If you accepted that thought, even though it was wrong, it shaped your life. Also, another thing we have to remember that all temptation happens in our minds. Romans 7, 21 through 25. This has become my way of life. When I want to do what is right, I always do what is wrong. My mind and heart agree with the law of God, but there is a different law at work deep inside of me that fights with my mind. The law of sin holds me in its power because sin is still in me. There is no happiness in me. Who can set me free from my sinful old self? God's law has power over my mind, but sin still has power over my sinful old self. I thank God I could be free through Jesus Christ, our Lord. One of the reasons why you get mentally fatigued is because there's a battle in your brain 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It can be debilitating because it can be intense at times and is intense because your mind is your greatest asset and Satan wants your greatest asset. So thoughts are powerful. They influence our habits. Now, God is far more interested in changing your mind, our mind, than changing our circumstances. You and I, we want God to take away all the problems, the pain, the sorrow, suffering, sickness, and sadness. But God wants to work on you first because transformation won't happen in your life until you renew your mind. Your mind has to be renewed until your thoughts begin to change. We have to remember who is on our side in this battle. We're not alone. We have Jesus walking alongside us. I love the last part of Romans chapter 8, starting with verse 31. What can we say about all these things? Since God is for us, who could be against us? God did not keep his own son for himself, but gave him for us all. Then with his son, will he not give us all things? Who could say anything against the people God has chosen? It is God who says they are right with himself. Who then can say we are guilty? It was Christ Jesus who died. He was raised from the dead. He is on the right side of God, praying to him for us. Who can keep us away from the love of Christ? Can trouble or problems? Can suffering wrong from others or having no food? Can it be because of no clothes or because of danger or war? For I know that nothing can keep us from the love of God. Death cannot, life cannot, angels cannot, leaders cannot, any other power cannot. Hard things now or in the future cannot. The world above or the world below cannot. Any other living thing cannot keep us away from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, knowing that, knowing nothing can separate us, how do we win the battle of our brain? Matthew 27, 37. And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. 
Winning the battle of the mind begins with receiving the love of God, Jesus' gift for us on the cross. Letting his love wash away all the insecurities and shame, really the sin as we have faith in him. Then loving him in return with all my mind. This means I see everything through the lens of love. I know God loves me no matter what. This is my identity. I choose to love him in return. It's a choice I make daily to live my life conform to his will, not mine. I could go out and sin if I wanted to, but I choose to love God with my mind. It is a choice. Now, people all through history have made the choice to renew their minds in Christ Jesus. And, and we could take comfort and hope. Uh, we actually have witnesses that, that point to that faithful life in Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding the shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Loving God with all my mind means that every choice I make has to run through the God filter. It's a simple question. How does God see this? What does his word say about this? Love equals obedience. I can't say I love God and then continue to live in disobedience to him and to his word. As I practice obedience, practice loving God with all my mind, my mind is renewed and establishes new patterns of thought. Then after a while, after, after I continue to marinate my mind in Him, it's no longer a battle to love God. It's the thing my mind naturally does.